How many times have you walked into a room to go get something or do something? And as soon as you get there, you've completely forgotten why. If you're like me, it happens more times than you can count and it drives you crazy. In today's video, I'll tell you what that thing is called, why it happens and what you can do about it. So let's go. So the general concept is called the doorway effect, where you walk through a doorway, most of us think about just going into a different room or a different place in our house, and as soon as you cross that threshold, somehow you're in a new environment and poof, the information disappeared. Why am I here? I know I'm here to get something, but what was it? It doesn't even just have to happen with real doorways or rooms. It can be when you're on your computer and you switch from one screen to another and you go, wait, what was I working on? So why does this happen? Well, our memory works by organizing things into events or episodes, kind of like a TV show. When we're in the living room scene and we want a blanket because we want to watch TV and it feels a little chilly in there, that episode is associated with the look of the living room, the television being there, the feel of being a little bit chilly. All those things are cues from our environment. When we go to a different room, suddenly, poof, all the cues are gone. In my bedroom, I'm not looking at the TV. I might be looking at the bed or the closet or something. I'm not necessarily thinking about watching TV and I'm not even necessarily still cold. This makes it much harder to successfully get in that room and get a blanket. Scientists have studied this effect. They had people move through virtual rooms or even real life rooms and tried to measure what do they remember when they get through the doorway. They found that in some circumstances, moving through doorways can make us forget, but it often happens when we have more than one thing on our mind or we get distracted. They're talking about working memory or how many things we can juggle in our head at once. For a lot of us, our working memory can get overloaded really easily and things fall off. So here we are, now we're walking back into the bedroom for that blanket, but suddenly as we get there, the dog races by with a shoe in his mouth. He's not supposed to be chewing on a shoe. Suddenly, we're not in that same headspace thinking about the movie and being cold. So why were we here again? Other things in our environment, like how cluttered it is, can also impact our working memory and our ability to know why we went in that room. The more junk you have lying around the house, the easier it is to get distracted by some unfinished task or something else that's sitting there. So what can you do about it? Here are some specific ways that you can sharpen your short-term memory to remember what you went to get. The first part is focus. Let's focus on one task at a time whenever possible. When you say to yourself, I need a blanket, you can say it out loud. I need a blanket, I'm a little cold. And as you walk into the other room, you can be saying blanket. My kiddos have definitely looked at me a little strangely as I've walked around the house saying things like blanket or spoon or kitty litter. <laughs> Before you go, you can visualize where in that other room the item is. Hmm, I know that the blanket is in the closet in my bedroom. This is helping us give that item, the blanket, a new context that shows up when you're in your bedroom. The picture helps. You can also work on your clutter. Marie Kondo has it right. A less cluttered space means a happier brain and one that works a lot better. For some people, their working memory is so bad that even with all those other strategies, they still go in the room and forget. For them, they can implement a specific physical strategy to help. For example, you can carry around sticky notes or your phone and jot down what you're going to get before you go. They even make little erasable sticky notes so you can jot down, blanket, before you go and then when you're done, you just wipe it right off. Therefore, you're loving not only your brain, but also the environment. I'll put a link for them in the description below. So the next time that you're irritated because you forgot why you went into a room, think of these strategies and start to implement them. The bottom line is that the more mindfully and intentionally we live our lives, the better we're going to be at remembering things like that. I have videos on the value of mindfulness and helping your body and your brain develop the skill of being more mindful, which is really the ability to pay attention to the present moment. 
Feel free to check those out if you'd like. And if you like these ideas, you can also join us in the This Beautiful Brain newsletter where I give ideas on how to have a healthy brain, how to have good quality of life, and how to have more fun every Sunday. I'll see you there. Bye.